Happy New Year and welcome back everyone. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And now for today's segment. The natural world, both real and fictional, presents a fascinating variety of life forms that have adapted uniquely to their respective environments. Today's report explores the similarities between the sandworms of Arrakis, a fictional species from Frank Herbert's Dune series, and the dingoes of Australia, a real-world apex predator. Despite their vast differences in biology and origins, both of these species exhibit striking parallels in their ecological roles, behavioral adaptations, and their cultural significance. Origins and Introduction The sandworms, also known as Shai Halud, are well known as being the colossal, kaiju-esque, annelid-looking creatures native to the desert planet of Arrakis in the Dune series. They are worshipped by the indigenous Fremen of the deserts, but deeper research into Dune lore would reveal, or rather I should say, suggest that the presence of sandworms on Arrakis might have been the result of terraforming experiments by ancient human travelers known as the Muadru. Now, according to legend, the Muadru were the ones to have brought sand trout, and that is the larvae of sandworms, to the once lush, water-rich, heavily forested planet of Arrakis. Think of pre-sandworm Arrakis as the Pacific Northwest of the United States, and began its desertification to become what it is now well known for. The sandworms are central to the planet's production of spice melange, analogous to real-world oil, and which is a substance vital for interstellar travel, making the existence of sandworms both a biological and economic cornerstone of Arrakis. Now, dingoes, officially Canis lupus dingo, are believed to have been introduced to Australia around 3,000 to 5,000 years ago by an unknown seafaring human population. Genetic evidence shows dingoes are descended from once domesticated dogs originating in Southeast Asia. Dingoes are not commonly thought to have been brought to Australia to serve a specific ecological or economic purpose, but rather they are thought to have just accompanied these early human visitors to Australia as hunting companions or camp guardians. Over time, these dogs became wild and adapted to the diverse Australian environment and outcompeted many of the pre existing native predators. Environmental adaptations. Sandworms are uniquely adapted to the harsh desert climate of Arrakis. They thrive in the arid conditions with their massive bodies capable of burrowing through sand at high speeds. Their life cycle, which includes the larval sand trout stage, allows them to control and maintain the desert ecology. Sand trout encapsulate water, effectively preventing the planet from developing into a more temperate climate, thereby preserving the desert conditions necessary for spice melange production. As for dingoes, dingoes have adapted to the varied climates of Australia from arid red deserts that Australia is more universally known for to tropical forests and even alpine terrains. The dingo is considered a distinct species from domestic dogs despite their origins. Key differences between the two, including a broader head and longer muzzle in the dingo, more flexible joints for hunting agility, longer teeth, a unique genetic makeup, and a tendency to howl instead of bark. Impact on ecosystems. Sandworms are considered both creators and custodians of Arrakis's unique desert ecosystem. As we said, sand trout encapsulate water, and when they were introduced by the Muadru, they drained Arrakis of the rest of its available water resources. Therefore, sandworms are basically what keep Arrakis a desert planet, positioning them as a keystone species of this ecosystem. At the same time, their role in producing spice melange positions them as a keystone species at a socio-political and economic level. For if 
Shai Hulud were to be no more, not only would Arrakis cease to be a desert planet, all of the structures of the entire known universe in Dune would fall. The introduction of dingoes dramatically altered Australia's ecosystem. As we said, they outcompeted the pre existing apex predators upon their arrival to Australia, most notably the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger and Tasmanian devil on the mainland, and usurped the role as Australia's top predators. As its top predator for the last few thousand years, the ecosystem of Australia has come to adapt to having dingoes as a keystone species. Many of Australia's native marsupials have developed defense mechanisms against dingoes, most notably how kangaroos will lead dingoes or even hunting dogs to large bodies of water in an attempt to drown them. A trait they acquired from thousands of years of dealing with dingo predation. Dingoes help suppress populations of overabundant invasive species, most notably rabbits and feral goats. In doing so, they indirectly benefit native vegetation and provide more food for indigenous herbivores. However, their predation on domestic livestock has made them a controversial presence, leading to widespread culling efforts. So much so that the world's largest fence, in fact, the dingo fence, was built to keep dingoes out of the fertile southeast part of Australia, where they are now mostly absent. Despite this, the ecological benefits of dingoes have led to many calls for their rewilding in many certain areas. Symbolic roles. Sandworms are more than ecological entities. They symbolize the spiritual and economic lifeblood of Arrakis. The indigenous desert Fremen revere them, seeing them as both a divine force and a resource to be harnessed. This duality reflects humanity's relationship with nature, both dependent on and in awe of its power. Dingoes hold a complex place in Australian culture. For Aboriginal Australians, they are spiritual totems and companions, intertwined with traditional stories and practices. For European settlers, however, dingoes became demonized like the wolves of Europe or North America and a threat to agricultural ambitions. This dual perception underscores broader tensions between conservation and exploitation. To conclude today's segment, the sandworms of Arrakis and the dingoes of Australia, despite their extremely different origins and natures and existences, share striking similarities in their roles as introduced species, ecological keystones, and cultural symbols. Both underscore the profound and often unintended consequences of human intervention in natural systems. Their stories serve as reminders of the delicate balance between adaptation, coexistence, and the transformative power of life in diverse environments. Thank you for tuning back into another special. I'll see you next time, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons.